everyone, welcome to another production diary, production diary number three, actually. My name is Ryan, and let's get started. And we're, last production diary, I mentioned that we were going to start with the main production, so that's what we're going to do. But first, I forgot to mention a couple of things for the last production diary. Uh, number one, uh, there was someone else I worked with in the pre-production phase, someone who knew HeroScape quite well. I'm not saying I don't know anything about HeroScape, but this guy knew it so much better. I was able to find him through one of the HeroScape groups on Facebook, and he offered his help. So I'm like, yes, please, you know? And we Skyped online and chatted and talked about the HeroScape universe, the characters that I was going to work into the first season of Tales of Valhalla. And I gained a lot of insight from him. His name is Jeremy. You can see him on the screen right there now. He was able to provide a little bit more backstory or provide sources of information about backstory to some of the characters. Uh, he liked what I was doing with some of the characters that didn't exactly have names, like the main squad that you see, the Airborne Elite. I've given them names and personalities, obviously. So he liked what he saw there. And so just fun to chat with them, and I know in the future, in, like in future seasons, when it comes to different characters, I'm definitely going to need um, ha use his advice and insight when it comes to creating this whole story for you know part of this universe. And I mean, this guy even helped write the Wikipedia for the Hero Escape, so it was really great working with him, and I look forward to work with him more in the future. So another thing I wanted to mention, I don't know if I mentioned one of these last time, but I know I did not mention the other thing. On a separate YouTube page, I do a weekly vlogger, I try to do a week, weekly vlog called My Week in 8 Minutes, based on uh, some of my personal life having to do with how I grow as a filmmaker, my goal being eventually uh, to produce and direct major motion pictures, that being the ultimate goal, and also you know, shows a little bit of aspects of my life things going on with my health, a little bit of family, pets, whatever, um, just what's going on in part of the week. U usually it's just filmmaking and the last like six months has been almost nothing but stop motion or doing voiceovers with people. But I wanted to mention that because I do post links on the Tales of a Hell Facebook page to some of those vlogs when it pertains to something related to Tales of Valhalla. Those are like a little bit extra uh, resources of, of backstory, behind the scenes stuff that you're probably not going to see on these production diaries. Uh, so I'd recommend go to My Week in 8 Minutes if you want to check those out and subscribe to there. I'll leave a link below. Or just, you know, go to Tales of Valhalla Facebook page and you just can see them link there. I, I upload them all the time. So I wanted to mention that. And also about Tales of a Hell Facebook page. There is a Facebook page and I do post pictures often um, of characters in different situations, uh, sometimes uh, behind the scenes of what I'm doing that particular week or day. So there's lots of resources of behind the scenes information as it pertains to the stop motion that I'm doing or the voice actors that I'm working with or how I'm going to be editing or whatsoever. So, with all that being said, and caught up with all that information stuff, um, one more thing, just wanted to give you an update on the production process that's going on right now. I've gotten a lot of the stop motion done uh, as, of the, as of the filming of this production diary. I have six more terrain uh, sets, scenes, to, to shoot, but most of what I'm going to be doing for the stop motion there is going to be done uh, at night because they are so big I have to use my kitchen table and I cannot control the lighting unless it be at, at night. So it's probably going to take a little bit of time, probably still it's going to be like six or eight weeks to finish all those, but the stop motion is getting done way, way ahead of time than I thought it was going to like get finished. So I just hope I keep on, keep up this pace of getting stop motion done, getting things edited, start releasing a trailer, and very possibly we could be releasing Tales of a Hell a little bit earlier than planned. I, my projected plan was later early fall into winter, 
but it might be a little earlier. I mean, we'll see. We'll see how. We'll see when the stop motion gets finished. I still got a lot of stop motion to do, but we'll see how it goes. So, okay, now that I'm caught up with all that, let's get into the main part of this production diary, was basically how I got started uh, with this whole production process. Uh, so I had to figure out, okay, what materials am I gonna do to make up a studio that's cheap, mostly DIY, but that will help everything that is uh, being shot through the lens will help just the scene look better and and everything look as professional as possible make the quality of the show as best as I can do it so let's get started with the materials now all the materials since we do not I do not live in a big house all the materials I keep up in my attic and when I need them for the week I bring them down so Let's bring them down and then I'll show them to you. See, we brought them down, and that gentleman is my father-in-law. Who, when he's here, he's helpful enough to where he helps me bring the stuff up and down uh, from the attic. Uh, so, uh, thank you so much, Dad, for doing that for me. Sometimes makes things go a lot faster. Anyway, okay. So let's go to the items that I use, and we're starting in no particular order. One, a small coffee table, and three can lights you can buy from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever. Lots of extension cords and power strips. Also use assorted pieces of cardboard. And it's good to have backdrop, so I have a day and night backdrop cloth. And then I have tripod, camera, additional little can light with plastic, and leg weights. Yes, leg weights. And also, I have three PVC pipe light stands. And you only see one, but I have two more that I use. And I also use the chairs from our dining room table and a coat hanger bar thing. It works, okay? Trust me, it works. And then, of course, a sorted light bulb, depending on what lighting I need. And of course, of course, of course, lots and lots of boxes that contain Heroscape, terrain, figures, etc, etc, etc. So that's basically the gist of what I use for a studio. And so when I do get started, before even setting up the studios, before even starting on that day or night, I have to, of course, build the, the terrain scene, the terrain set. And so here's a little video of uh, two sets, one small, one big, and you can notice the size difference. So here we go.
Okay, now that you've seen those sets get built, let me show you now. First, uh, let's, well, you, sh you saw both of those sets being like intermediately, uh, you know, like kind of joined together when it came to building. You saw one back and forth. But for setting up the studio, first we're going to start with the daytime set, which is the small bedroom. Okay, and as you can see, we're building the set. I don't know if you can see it, but when I'm setting up my camera, my tripod, you notice that if you can, if you can see, I actually put the leg weights into the tripod to keep the camera weighed down. So that way, it's not moving anywhere, jumping anywhere. I just want to keep it anchored. So when the stop motion is happening, you know those figures are moving and nothing else is moving. Okay, now that you've seen the day set been built and you saw me do a little stop motion work there, let's move on to setting up the night studio. And even though it is at night and I do get tired easily, it's still very fun to do, very fun to turn my living room slash kitchen dining area into just one huge studio for stop motion. So. Let's see that video. Okay, now that you've seen me set up the studio, really a lot of work to do, and one of the things that I do sometimes is some of the huge sets that, like some of the times I do wide shots, and sometimes I only need like pieces of that big set for certain uh, like close-ups of the scene, so I actually do those during the day separately than what I do at night. So that is basically the gist of what I got and what I do. As you see, a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that's brought together to build that studio, some of it's DIY, some of the stuff I've had with me for years, and I'm just like, okay, you know, should I throw it out, should I keep, and turns out they work good for this project, so I'm glad I've kept uh, everything I had. Some of those boxes, you see how 
uh, I raise them up to camera level sometimes when I need some height or I, I lower them down. It also provides a sturdy little stand for like the, the HeroScape terrain pieces just to sit on. And I can move them around easier instead of moving just the terrain itself to where I might end up uh, shaking something or knocking something off or making something come apart. And I actually got those boxes from a local grocery store. I just basically, I mean, when in doubt, just ask somebody. I, and that's what I did. So, like, okay, I went to the produce section, I saw these boxes, I'm like, hmm, I could use these. And so I just asked the person, you know, that was one of the workers that was walking around there, I'm like, hey, can I grab a couple of these things? They're like, sure, why not? I'm like, great, thanks. So, so I did. I mean, you never know when you're going to find something that might help you later when it comes to making your uh, production you know that much better and, and helping with whatever needs you have as far as a video or stop motion production or whatever you call it and now we are just about finished with this production diary but i do have one more thing actually two things i want to talk about for the next production diary we're going to get into part one of the whole stop motion production behind the scenes basically going to be behind the scenes of the first half of the stop motion production. And that will be for next time. But I would like to finish with just a little treat for you guys. I did this in one of my My Week in 8 Minutes vlogs where I showed some of the raw stop motion footage footages. Um, so if you want to go see the My Week in 8 Minutes, you can. I'm going to do another one here. Not the same one I did in My Week in 8 Minutes, something different. And since I released that, I've obviously done more stop motion stuff. So here is some raw, unedited stop motion work for you guys to see, just to see what kind of what the feel is going to be like before this show. And with that, I thank all of you for watching, and we'll see all of you next time.